Hi guys, these are our notes. Um, we're in a little um, mini unit about sequences and series, and we're going to talk today about arithmetic sequences. I know it looks, it looks like arithmetic, but the way that you say it is arithmetic. So notes, arithmetic sequences. Um, so first we'll start off with what a sequence is. A sequence is just a set of objects. We're going to use numbers um, in order. An arithmetic sequence, which is what we're going to look at today, there's kind of two types of sequences that we're going to look at in today's arithmetic. An arithmetic sequence is just a sequence where the numbers have the uh, a constant difference between them. Um, it means you add the same number over and over and over again. So it's just a sequence of numbers where the difference between one term and the next is a constant. So basically you add the same number over and over again. Okay, we're going to look at two different like formulas that we can write for a arithmetic sequence. We're going to have the recursive formula and then the explicit formula. Sometimes you'll hear it called the explicit rule. And the recursive formula looks like a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 plus d. And then they'll also be given um, like a sub number, a sub sum number equals some number. So what those little pieces mean is this a sub n just means the nth term so hypothetically speaking you know you were trying to find the tenth term then it would say a sub 10 if you were trying to find the fourth term it would say a sub 4 that's like the notation we use for it a sub n minus 1, so if this number was 10, if you subtract 1 from that, you're at 9. So this is just the term um, before the nth term. This letter D right here, this is the common difference. That's whatever number you are adding over and over and over again. And then this whole piece right here, this is just any term, but it's usually the first that they give you. Not always, but it's usually the first term. It'll say like a sub one equals seven. That means the first term in the sequence is seven. We also have an explicit formula we're gonna look at. Sometimes, like I said, they'll call it the rule. Um, the explicit formula looks like a sub n equals a sub one plus n minus one in parentheses times d on the outside. And a sub n again just means the nth term. a sub one, since there's a one there, that means that this is the first term. And n just means the term number. And again, D means the common difference. So what we like about the explicit formula or rule is this one can be used to find any term. The 
the problem with the recursive formula is you have to know the term that came before. So say I wanted to know a sub 100. Then to use this recursive formula, I would need to know a sub 99. And I would need to know 98 to know 99 and 97 to know 98 and so on. But this explicit formula, you just need to know which term you want and then you plug in that number for your n. So if you wanted to know the 12th term, you plug in 12 for n. If you wanted to know the um, 100th term, you would just plug in 100 for n. Okay, so we're going to do a few examples. So go ahead and write down examples and write out your first one. Can pause so it says write the recursive and explicit formulas for the nth term of the sequence then find the 15th term so here's my sequence 19 comma 23 comma 27 comma 31 comma 35 so what you want to look at is we know that this is the first term that's a1 this is my second term a2 a3 a4 a5 and the pattern's just going to keep going on so this is my first term second term third term and so on well, what we want to find is our common difference. What number is being added each time? So hopefully you guys can kind of see what the pattern is for your numbers. To go from 19 to 23 to 27 to 31 to 35, that number that you're adding is 4. So your common difference, D, is equal to 4. So when we write our recursive formula... Our recursive formula is right up here in blue. The a sub n equals and the a sub n minus 1, that all stays. The only thing that you're actually plugging in is this letter D. And then you have to write out this part. So for the letter D, we know that the common difference is 4, so it's plus 4. Let me do this little semicolon. And then we just give any term. It doesn't matter which term it is. So I'm just, normally it's the first term, so we say A sub 1 equals 19. And that's all you have to do for the recursive formula. That's our answer. A sub N equals A sub N minus 1 plus 4. The first term is 19. So in order to be able to use this recursive formula, you have to know one term. You can't just give um, this piece right here that is not an, an explicit rule it's not like you have to know a first term second term third term something to be able to use it so the first term is 19 the uh, for uh, the pattern is adding four so the first term is 19 and then you add four that's 23 and then add four that's 27 add four 31 add four add four add four add four that's the pattern for the explicit rule you need to plug in two things and you're gonna to have to simplify. So for the explicit rule, the two things that you need to plug in are the first term and the common difference. Those are the two things that you need. So you start off with your a sub n equals, but you're gonna plug in the first term. My first term is 19 plus the n minus one stays in parentheses. And then we're gonna plug in the common difference, which is the number four. So I plugged in two things. I plugged in 19 and four. These two pieces stayed the same, a sub n and the n minus one. So we're not gonna be having x's um, in our, um, you can use whatever variable you want, but usually we use n instead of x. All right, now I just simplify. So I get rid of my parentheses by distributing. I get 19 plus 4n minus 4. So we get a sub n equals, I'm going to go 4n first, and then 19 minus 4 is 15. So this right here would be my explicit rule. a sub n equals 4n plus 15. That's my explicit rule. The other thing that it asked me to find, the last thing was find the 15th term. So in order to do the recursive formula, if you want to know the 15th term, you need to know the 14th term and then just add 4. We don't know the 14th term, we know the first term, which is 19. So I could just find add 4, 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 until I got to the 15th term, but I would find a lot of terms that I don't actually need. So instead, to find the 15th term, what you do is you just go to your explicit rule and where you see these ends, you're just gonna plug in the number 15 because that's the one that I want. So I have a sub 15 because that's the 15th term. I plug in 15 for the n and then add 15. And I'm just gonna simplify. So uh, four times 15 is 60 and 60 plus 15 is 75. 
So that is the 15th term. A sub 15 is 75. That's the 15th term. Okay, so ex the recursive rule right here, you need to know the term that came before. So you would know the sixth term, seventh, eighth, ninth, 10, 11, 12. But the explicit rule, you can just plug in whatever term that you want. You plug in that number for your n and that will give you your um, term. All right, let's try it again. So it says find the recursive explicit formula and then find the 15th term. So same exact um, directions is the last one, but it gives us 12, 6, 0, negative 6, negative 12. All right, so to find the recursive, you always start with a sub n equals a sub n minus 1, and then you just add the common difference. So here, if you notice, the numbers are actually going down, right? So it's 12 to 6 to 0 to negative 6 to negative 12. Here, the number that you have for your common difference, since the numbers are going down, that just means it's going to be negative. 12 minus 6 is negative uh, 6. 6 minus 6 is 0. 0 minus 6 is negative 6, and so on. So the common difference here is negative 6. So you're adding a negative number. So you're just going to write minus 6 for your um, D in the recursive formula, and then you have to give one of the terms. It doesn't matter which term you give. So I'm going to say A sub 1 equals 12. You could say A sub 2 equals 6, A sub 3 equals 0, whichever one, but usually the first one's the best one to give. All right, now let's do our explicit. So the explicit formula also starts off with a sub n. I don't have it um, on this page, but the formula is a sub n equals a sub 1, which is 12. So I'm going to use 12 plus parentheses n minus 1 times d, which is negative 6. I'm just going to put in parentheses. And then we do have to simplify this one. We don't leave it in this form. So you distribute the letter d. So I get 12 plus negative 6n plus 6. I shouldn't have written plus negative 6n, but that's okay. Then you're going to go ahead and have our a sub n equals. I always put my n first. And then 12 plus 6 is 18. So this one is my explicit formula. Then the last thing we have to find is our 15th term. So remember to find, to use the recursive formula, I would need to know the 14th term and then the 13th and 12th and 11th, all the way back to the first term or, you know, like find the fifth term here. But for the explicit rule, if you want to find the 15th term, you just plug in 15 for your n. Hypothetically speaking, this said the 21st term, I would plug in 21s here. If it said the 100th, I would plug in 100 there. So it just depends which number it says. So if I want to find the 15th term, I plug in 15, so a sub 15 equals negative 6 times 15 plus 18. Let's see, uh, 30, 60, I think that's 90. 30, 60, 90. So I get negative 90 plus 18. That gives me negative 72. That's the 15th term, a sub 15. All right, couple more examples. Number three, go ahead and make sure you write them down. It says write the explicit formula for the uh, arithmetic sequence whose fifth term is 14 and common difference is negative two. So a sub five is 14, that's the fifth term, and the common difference d is negative two. All right, we wanna write the explicit formula. So remember, I'll write it down again since we don't have it on this um, page. So a sub n equals a sub one plus n minus one times d. So I already know d, d is negative 2, but the other thing that I need to find this function uh, or to write the equation is I need to know a sub 1, right? I need to know a sub 1. Those are the two things that I need. They didn't give me a sub 1. They didn't give me the first term. They gave me the fifth term. So there's a couple different ways we can find it. I'll do it one way here for number 3 and then a different way for number 4 because it's kind of a similar problem. So what I can do then is what I have is n and I have a sub n. So I actually have these two pieces right here. I have a sub n is 14 and I have n is five. So what I can do is plug those three things in and find a sub one and then go back and plug it in. So a sub n, that's 15, the nth term is 15. 
a sub one is what I'm trying to find, plus the number of the term is five minus one times D is negative two. So right now I'm trying to solve for a sub one because I need these two things to write my explicit formula. Plus five minus one is four, four times negative two is negative eight. So I'm gonna add eight to both sides and get that the first term a sub one is 23, right? 15 plus, oh wait, this isn't 15. I'm not gonna go back and re-record for that. This should have been a 14. Hopefully you guys caught that before. So it's 22. So the 14th is right here. All right, so now that I know my first term, I take my first term, that's A1. I plug that in and my common difference is two and then I will um, find my equation. So a sub n equals, the first term is 22, I had to solve to find that, plus n minus one, that part stays the same, and then the common difference is negative two. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and simplify, so a sub n equals 22 plus negative two n plus two. So my formula is negative two n plus 24. Okay, so again, they didn't give me the first term, but I need that to write the formula. So what I had to do is take the fifth term, plug those pieces in, and then solve, right? So I took the, um, the five for the n, and my 14 is the a sub n, and then I just plugged it in. All right, now last example, write the explicit formula given the recursive formula, a sub n equals a sub n minus one plus four, a sub three equals 16. So what they've given to us is they've given us um, the common difference that the D is four, that means the pattern is add four, add four, add four, add four. And then they gave me that a sub three, that means the third term, the third term is 16. Right. Well, in order to write our formula, we need to know the first term. Okay, this is what we need to be able to write the explicit formula. We need to know two things. We need to know a sub one and d, and that's how we can write the explicit formula. Well, they didn't give me the first term, they gave me the third term, but I do know the common difference. So what that means is, okay, we have a sub, <coughs> excuse me, a sub one, a sub two, a sub three a sub four keeps going, a sub five. So we know that the third term is 16 and then the pattern is adding four. That means um, 16, the next term I would add four, the next term I would add four. Well, if I wanna go backwards, instead of adding four, I could do the opposite and subtract four to go backwards. So 16 minus four is 12, 12 minus four is eight, and I could use that method to find the first term. So I could have done what I did up here. I could have plugged in three for my n and then 16 for my a sub n. I could have done exactly what I did on example three. But instead, I went ahead and I just used the recursive formula and I went backwards. So instead of add four, add four, add four, add four, you subtract four, subtract four, subtract four, and that way you could find the term that you want as well. All right, so let me go ahead and plug in the things that we know now. So we know that the um, first term is eight plus n minus one. We know the common difference is four, so I'm gonna plug that in and then we'll just simplify um, to solve. So a sub n equals eight plus four n minus four. So my recurse or my explicit formula is four n plus four. So the common difference is four. That's always going to be in front of your n. So like if you look at our examples here, like the common difference, the numbers in front of n. Here our common difference was negative six. That's in front of n. So your common difference is always going to end up in front of your n when you kind of distribute. Okay. All right, so these notes are gonna go in on slide number four and number five of your new digital notebook. This is just like a little mini unit. We'll only be on it for a couple weeks and it's just four sets of notes. And your homework's on Delta Math.